in the pipes for Portland, but as you said, tonight it is Shelby Hogan making her NWSL debut. Off we go in this all NWSL semifinal of the International Champions Cup. Houston in orange, Portland in black. The fans already making some noise. What a wonderful atmosphere it always is here at Providence Park. Naughton has been a tremendous leader for this Houston team. Her second year with the club has played every minute of the NWSL season so far. And in fact, every minute across all competitions. That includes the Challenge Cup earlier this spring as well. Madison Pogarsh on that far side for Portland. And then it looked like Sophia Smith pulled down. There was a foul whistled. Sophia Smith out of Stanford, the number one overall pick in the 2020 draft, was the youngest player in the NWSL, now 21. Now it's one of her teammates, Olivia Moultrie, 15, who holds that honor. That was Kristen Westfall making a run forward. Moultrie is in the starting 11 for the third straight match. Number 42 for Portland. And these first five, 10 minutes, Gen 4, the Houston Dash in particular, are so critical for the last five games, giving up early leads, conceding soft goals. Need to make sure that they keep the game tight, don't give it up, and have to be chasing the game so early on. And what a tremendous job Mark Parsons has done, by the way. You said it earlier. The fact that Portland comes in here on a seven-match unbeaten streak when they're missing players like Christine Sinclair, the legend <laughs> who now has a huge banner welcoming her back after her gold medal with Canada at the Olympics. But Lindsay Horan, Crystal Dunn, Becky Sauerbrunn, they were all gone. And yet Portland did not miss a beat. And James Clarkson has been looking for a response out of his team. These are important matches for his team to get ready for what he calls the most critical stretch of the season coming up in league play once they get back into action next week. And I agree with him. This is an extremely critical point. And this, this tournament could be the difference maker for them. Haven't really got off on the right foot throughout this entire season. Just ups and downs in the performance. We talked about the early goals that they've conceded. But they still have a strong squad. So it'll be about finding that momentum, keeping this game tight, and then let things slow down as it wears on and see if they can catch Portland on that counter attack in quick attacking transition. This is Amanda Dennis making her second straight start for Houston. Several changes made after a crushing loss at OL Reign on August 7th. There was a 5 1 loss. One of those changes, the goalkeeper Lindsay Harris, as they await Jane Campbell's return. Rachel Daly, quick throw. James Clarkson has been so pleased with Veronica Latsko. And her play wants to get her up there with Rachel Daly as much as he can. Here goes Madison Pogarsh. Jersey tug to slow her down. And that'll be enough of that. Westfall. It's her seventh start of the season. Sophia Smith a little tangled up. Megan Nally making her first start, just her fourth appearance of the season, number 39 in the back line for Portland. Sophia Smith, four goals, one assist on the season, was leading the Thorns in scoring until Simone Charlie has a goal in each of the last two matches. Charlie available off the bench for Mark Parsons. I've got to think if you're Houston, Lori, there's a there's a bit of that that fire that that demand for respect for this club because you know they come in sitting in eighth place in the league they know they've got work to do to get into the playoff picture six teams for the first time this year will advance to the NWSL playoffs but they've got to get above that line no wins in the last four matches and Portland making all these changes there's nothing this 
Houston team likes better than to feel a little bit disrespected, <laughs> no matter the reason for changes being made. Yeah, they're okay with the underdog mentality, but the difference between these two teams currently, though, is in something that Mark Parsons spoke to us about a lot, which is they're very clear on their identity, on who they are, how they want to play, and they had to go through some growing pains, especially back in 2019. Rocky Rodriguez now called for this foul. But they had to go through those growing pains to understand too many changes back then. Now they keep consistent. They have players that understand their roles, and that's why they've been able to go on this seven-game unbeaten streak. But for the Houston Dash, it's quite the opposite. They haven't been able to find that clear identity, haven't had as deep of a roster throughout this season to be able to be as consistent. But now it's still about making the moment Spencer trying to take the moment there. Go ahead, Lori. Yeah, making the most of these moments. And this gives them a little bit of a different look and creates a little bit of a, a different flow with the season instead of just the typical NWSL games. Came out strong in the Challenge Cup last year. So can they recreate that coming into this tournament? Such a unique opportunity to get to see in our first match to European teams face off in Barcelona and Lyon and now two NWSL teams and then when you start thinking ahead to both of those matchups whoever they may be on Saturday such intriguing prospect to get to see NWSL against Europe I mean it's it's, it's not everything not, not something you get to see very often. And it's so fun to see the differences. And we talked a lot about homegrown and how important that is for Lyon and Barcelona in the previous game. Jamia Fields still on it. Well, Fields and Spencer may be a little raw on the defending standpoint, but you can see the danger they can create once they do get up into the attack. That was Latsko with the final effort. And it's good energy so far from the Houston Dash, keeping things tight when the Portland Thorns get into their attacking half, but then going forward, getting numbers higher up the field, condensing it, getting numbers around. But to my point, for the U.S. and the NWSL teams, not as much of that homegrown talent that you see in the European teams, but more of the college system, but still some of these teams getting players valuable minutes, having to rotate and manage that we talked about with the international stars being gone. Pogars, just her second start of the season for Portland, but her third year joined the team as a trialist in 2019. Gabby Seiler on the ball there for a moment for James Clarkson, and she's been such a great addition, hasn't she? A former Portland Thorns player came over to Houston in a trade, so back on the field she knows well. What was it that James Clarkson said? I wish all trades could be that successful. Yeah. <laughs> Arguably their best player during the Olympic time frame when a lot of their players were missing, scored a couple goals, but also it's just been that box-to-box -box midfield that's helped link play. Sophia Smith is ready to go. Coming down the middle, Smith in the box. Save! Whoa, what a big moment there by Amanda Dennis. Sophia Smith just so opportunistic links up with Quika just able to get on the end of this but it's Amanda Dennis that comes off her line so well to be able to close down the angle it's a really important save especially after we've talked about James Clarkson saying they have to stop conceding early goals soft goals putting themselves under their own pressure Three of the last four matches Houston has conceded in the first eight minutes. That was in the ninth that saved by Dennis. And that includes a match against the Portland Thorns, who pulled out a 1-0 victory just a couple of weeks ago off a goal from Sophia Smith in the first 30 seconds or so. And Amanda Dennis, a player that just making her second game in the NWSL, starting against the Washington Spirit on Friday after a huge loss for the Houston Dash against the OL Reign. James Clarkson saying they have to have to have a reaction, overhaul some of their starting lineup. That was one of the changes. And now Amanda Dennis against a top team in the league coming up with a huge save in the opening 10 minutes. Bree Vizali fouled there by Pogarsh. Oyster wanting to switch it over. Megan Oyster steady in the center of the defense for Houston. Shea Groom, can she get involved early on 
so dynamic, so much fun to watch when she does get involved in the attack for the dash. We we'll fully expect to see her start out wide, but also pinch in. This is Houston Dash team. This isn't a traditional 4-4-2 flat across the midfield. Typically see them in a 4-3-3 with Shea Green playing in that attacking central midfield role. But tonight out wide, see how Portland Thorns deal with her movement off the ball. Some space to be had. Portland finds it. A little too soon on the touch. Looking for right says strong Okimoto. Player who's uh, in her first season with Portland had a total of one minute played number 44 before getting the start in this match tonight. She's a national team replacement player. So this is a nice opportunity for her. Olivia Moultrie after that play. It's going to be a fun story to watch throughout the years. 15 years old. Had to legally win a battle with the league to be able to play. She did. Fields. Siler. Former player both at the University of Georgia and the University of Florida. Sophie Schmidt. Little extra bounce in the step for the veteran 33 year old Schmidt. Got that gold medal hopefully on display somewhere. Corner kick coming up for the dash first of the match for either team. Daly delivers. Still up for grabs. Headed back across. Vizali right at the keeper, Shelby Hogan. And another good opportunity from the Houston Dash off the set piece. Shelly Hogan doing a good job, though, just making sure that she keeps that out of any danger. Rivazali shot right to her, so not much she has to do with it, but a confidence booster for the, the NWSL debutante. Yeah, you have to think both of these goalkeepers, certainly something to prove out here. They're both 22 years old. Just the second start for Dennis, so I guess she's a veteran for Houston compared <laughs> to Hogan, who, as you mentioned, this is her first appearance, first start. But you know they don't want it to be on them. Yes, they know they're not the typical keepers you expect to see for these respective teams, but they want to make sure that they're not a part of the story in a bad way. So far, it's been good. Oh, there is no match for Rachel Daly, and there's not a little extra bite in there somewhere every now and then. Quika getting to play in the midfield of the former Florida State Seminole. Smith all over the place in that front line. Back across, Moultrie, what a touch! Pogarsh gives it a whirl. And that is a fantastic first touch from Sophia Smith just to get to the end line and pa bypass the pressure from Jamia Fields. And you have to think that that is an area where Portland Thorns have targeted, knowing that Jasmine Spencer and Jamia Fields are attackers that have been transported back to the outside back position, just given the fact that the Houston Dash are thin on that back line. Both had good showings in their last game against, in that comeback tie against the Washington Spirit, but still new to the position and the positioning that it takes to be successful. Sophia Smith reading it well. Ball still bouncing. It is Rodriguez, Costa Rican international. Finally tries to regain some control for Portland. Mark Parsons has been so good in his time in charge of the Portland Thorns. This is his sixth season with the team. Won the Shield in 2016, in the regular season, won the NWSL Championship in 2017. And we now know he's 
going to be leaving at the end of the season, going to coach the Netherlands national team. So we wish him the best of luck, but certainly happy to see him. And he knows he wants to finish with a bang. He knows he has a team to be able to do so. As we mentioned, the Thorns in first place, record of 9-3 and 2 so far in the league, with about 10 matches to play for everybody. Spencer. So speedy. Good with the ball at her feet, but just got tripped up in the end. I think Spencer is right. It did look like a foul. She's done a good job of joining into the attack, whether it's dribbling on that right hand side or just finding her teammates to connect. This is a player that has played striker her entire career. Been asked to play that right back position, but has moved in there seamlessly. Done a good job to provide some attacking options for the dash. interchange to find Jamia Fields with some time and space. She says, let's go, Rachel Daly. All-time leading scorer, 30 goals across all competitions for Houston. Groom slicing into the area on her right foot. What a goal by Shea Groom! And that is a great goal from Shea Groom in the Houston Dash. It's Rachel Dana that continues the pressure, just holds the play up to allow Shea Groom. And then there's that touch right there that gets her around Quika to set herself up onto her favorite right foot. We talked about that outside to in positioning from Shea Groom. How do the Portland Thorns deal with it? Well, they can't in this time because she gets a good look on frame to be able to bend that into the far post and just tucks it in. And with the rookie, Shelly Hogan, nothing she can do about it because that is a perfectly paced, placed shot. Shea Groom likes these big stages. She was superb in the Challenge Cup championship run that Houston made in 2020, the championship that earned them this spot in the International Champions Cup. Groom had three goals and an assist in that tournament, was named Best 11 Championship Game MVP. And now she gives the dash the advantage early on enemy territory on Portland's home field. And so far early on, Jen, but game starting to flow exactly what James Clarkson wanted. Stay tight early on, then slow things down, start to get themselves involved in the game. They've been good defensively, compact, limiting the opportunities outside of that Sophia Smith chance where Amanda Dennis came up big early on in that eighth minute. But outside of that, Portland Thorns, not a lot of opportunities and Houston Dash not shying away from this matchup. Moultrie to Rodriguez, but then nobody home but Naughton. And here comes Daly, one touch to settle herself, another to take it. And that's how quick the Houston Dash can punish the Portland Thorns. It's just a big ball out of the back from Naughton. Daly does well. The only other thing she could have done is just hold it up, allow for other players to get involved. Tight angle, never really going to get that on frame. Had Lasko on that far, far post, but always tight to have to be able to get her hips around to find her. brought down 27 year old of Alta Loma California that one hurt fields won NCAA championship the Florida State Seminoles in 2011 and I'm sorry to bring this up Lori but she had the game-winning goal in the <laughs> final against 
the Virginia Cavaliers. You would bring that up, Jen. <laughs> Just thought you'd appreciate that extra <laughs> little nugget. Second match of the day. <laughs> Bringing it up. You can see that Strom Okamoto and Smith have switched sides, but here comes Smith ready to get on the ball. Maybe a little nudge, but not much of one. Not enough for our referee to blow the whistle. Smith on it. And now we do hear the whistle. Maybe advantage allowed initially. And three Houston defenders converged. And these are the positions where the Portland Thorns want Sophia Smith going at the opposition, taking on 1v1, circulating the ball around, looking to see if they can find the open player and then serve crosses in. Have been so successful throughout this season with balls whipped in, finding players on the end of them. Well done initially from Jasmine Spencer. It does give up the, the free kick. Portland's going to put it on the foot of the 15-year-old Olivia Moultrie. In the box, header, saved, oh my goodness! That was headed for goal, and Rachel Daly flat out robs the Portland Thorns. And sometimes that's what you need, it's just a little bit of luck and great positioning. This time, it's the heart and soul of this team. Rachel Daly just in great positioning. This is a good ball in from Olivia Moultrie. Rocky Rodriguez just looking to redirect it, but all the way, Rachel Daly reads it well, just does enough to flick it over and keep it out of the back of the net. Corner kick now. Daly doing it all for Houston. The dynamic duo, Rachel Daly, Shea Groom, one with a key play on the defensive end, one with the goal on the other end. The story of the match so far. And this feels like the little glimpses of the team that we saw in the 2020 Challenge Cup when they won, fighting, doing whatever they can to keep the ball out of the back of the net. Everybody stepping up, still early minutes and a lot of possession for the Portland Thorns in their attacking half. But still some good opportunities and good team play from the Houston Dash so far. Daly trying to sneak in behind Hubley there defensively. Mark Parsons could not say enough good things about the play of Kelly Hubley. All season long, she is one of the familiar faces, the, the known quantities out there, if you will, for Portland in this starting 11. Getting the captain's armband, Jen, tonight shows how much respect he has for the center back. A lot of time having to split time between Sauerbrunn and Minguez, typically the two starters if they're healthy for this Portland Thorns, and Hubley just continue to grow into the position and step up when needed. Tell you who's proud watching this match right now is Elk Grove High School because they've got two former teammates out there, one on either side. One is Hubley, that's in Illinois, and the other one is Naughton, center back on the other side for Houston, played together in high school. Marissa Everett calling for it, has it, has time to turn. Here's Moultrie. Oh, she is, she is savvy. It's my first time getting a chance to see Olivia Moultrie in person. I think, like most people, you probably heard a lot and read a lot about Olivia Moultrie before you ever got to see her play. You wondered, could this 15-year-old really be worth it? Portland seems to believe she certainly is. Originally, there was a rule not allowing players under the age of 18 to play in this league. She didn't feel that was fair. She fought for it, got her chance. Already has an assist on the season. And really should have had another, if not for the head of Rachel Daly. Siler. Quick header back central. I like the idea. That was 
groom. And the dash doing a good job of, of finding the space out wide, especially on this left-hand side, bypassing those central players for the Portland Thorns. But now it'll be about finding and connecting more efficiently going forward. We saw it off of the initial goal with Shea Groom getting around her player. Hogarsh aggressively hunting down the ball. Moultrie, Smith making her way through the middle. Sophia Smith against Naughton. And a little help from Fields does the job. Rodriguez, former Herman Trophy winner with Penn State. Rodriguez calling for it, Everett now. Portland shuffling the pieces, up comes Hubley wanting to go to the other side. Hogarth too much on the ball. Right now, just a few misplaced passes from the Portland Thorns. Doing a good job. The last few possession opportunities for the Thorns. Finding Rocky Rodriguez, the open player. Can they continue to find her, utilize her, switch the point of attack? Exactly what the Houston Dash don't want. For them to be able to get their fullbacks of Portland higher up the field, create numbers overload. They want to see if they can pinch them in to one side, keep them there, and then look to counterattack quickly. More the Thorns can open up this game, bodes well for them going forward and forces Dash to be in more expansive shape. Out wide it goes. And can we just give a quick shout out to, to the Rose City Riveters? You just saw them a little while ago. So great to hear this crowd in Portland. So great to have a crowd, be a crowd, be a part of it all with you. Zali, patient, got around Westfall, Groom picks it up at the edge of the box. Spencer. Oh, Vizali was ready to wind up on that one. Siler stepped in front of her. And now Houston resets. Schmidt. Vizali toward that back post. What a nice grab by Hogan. And it's those wide spaces that Houston Dash continue to find themselves in there, causing some issues for the Portland Thorns. Really good hold on the ball from Hogan. Otherwise, it would be Latsko on that far post that would be there for the easy tap in. We have a player down for Houston, and our referee, Andre Monroy, will blow the whistle. Certainly some concern on the face of James Clarkson. Latsko, I, I believe, and that's... Oh, and it's Quika's leg in the end that just collides with Latsko's face as they are both coming down. Three goals, one assist on the season for Latsko. 
It's in her fourth year with the dash had a ACL injury in 2019. And is really as I mentioned earlier been a bright spot for this Houston team it's been playing really well. We're in about the 30th minute now though Lori both teams get a chance here to kind of gather themselves talk things over a little bit your thoughts through 30 minutes on what we've seen. Well certainly the Houston Dash has come out with some fire knowing that they needed a win needed some momentum. We've mentioned how important this would would be for them adding another trophy to the Challenge Cup from last year in 2020. But they've showed some fire and they've done well positionally to really kind of stop any sort of dangerous attack from the Portland Thorns. And the Thorns, it'll just be about a lot of rotation in their lineup. Now it'll be about being more patient, doing what they do best, which is circulating the ball, finding those fullbacks higher up the field, Westfall and Pogarsh in this game and then sending dangerous balls in. And if it's not on, continuing to find that open player going forward. Portland Houston facing off in an all NWSL semifinal, our second of the night in this International Champions Cup. Barcelona, Lyon in our first semifinal. One of the key moments so far in this match, let's look. And this, <laughs> and this is exactly what you need from your players at one end being the vertical threat looking to get in behind but defensively doing what it takes also to keep the ball out of the back of the net and outside of that opportunity and the one from Sophia Smith where Amanda Dennis came up big smothering the ball in the Sophia Smith breakaway there hasn't been a ton of opportunities for Portland. So let's go. Able to gather herself. Daly says, hey, remember, it's our kick here. Let's get some numbers in the box, shall we? And the crowd certainly not liking the decision. Houston coming off a 2-2 draw. They equalized late in their last match against Washington. Got a Nothing doing on that free kick. Crowd says that karma, that's karma. Because if you remember, play was actually stopped well after that, that interaction between Latsko and Cuica. And so I think the crowd a little frustrated that Houston was going to get to take advantage of a free kick there. It wound up being nothing. Small playing keep away. Strong Okimoto, national team replacement player, trying to make her moment. Ball's out. That's a corner kick for Portland. This could wind up being a big moment. Second corner kick of the match for Portland. Moultrie to take it again. Ball headed out by Naughton. Rodriguez calling for it in the middle. I believe it's her number on the board. She'll be leaving this match soon for Portland, trying to make the most of her time. You are allowed 11 substitutions. You mentioned roster rotation. It's not just in the starters. Mark Parsons very aware, having a plan of how he wants to have his players be in their best possible shape once they get back in the regular season and to be able to get a great performance here in this tournament. Smith in the box. Strong Okamoto may be wrong footed and that's not going to do it. Sophia Smith continues to be dangerous regardless of what side she's on. 
playing balls in. Portland Thorns just have to do a better job of executing. Too easy and too predictable once they get in and around the box. Rodriguez. Kogarsh put it behind Quika. Quika more of an outside back by trade, forced into duty in the midfield tonight. Komodo. Nope. And Vizelli has time here. Should make the right choice. Finding number three is usually a good one. Back heel from Daly. Siler assessing. It was that was a smart decision from Bri Vizelli. Just to put her foot on the ball, find Daly out wide, and then keep possession. It wasn't on directly to go. They were going to force themselves to get the turnover quickly. Now buy themselves a little bit of time, manage the game well, get back defensively. to disrupt things. Taylor Porter, the substitution, and the crowd applauds the work of Rocky Rodriguez in this first half. And this was a pre-planned sub from Mark Parson's side. Unfortunate, though, to find themselves down 1-0 in these first 35 minutes. Rocky Rodriguez, a calming presence in that midfield experience, considering the youth that they have out on the field currently. Taylor Porter coming in. More in experience. Just to follow up on your point there, she's played just one minute so far, made her NWSL debut the last game against Orlando, 23 years old, played at NC State. And if you're Houston Dash, this is an area where you have to continue to push the pace. Last 15 minutes or so, have something to prove. They've come out collectively, made it difficult defensively, made it predictable for themselves, but now start to take advantage of more of these moments. You have a fresh player coming in, not a lot of experience in the NWSL. Can you find time and space around her? Look to exploit those opportunities going forward. Portland this season in the NWSL has been the highest scoring team. They've been the best in a lot of categories Why they find themselves atop the table. Highest scoring team. They also lead the league in shots, shots on goal, chances created, fewest goals allowed. They've been good so far in 2021. Right now, shots in favor of the Dash 5-4 in this match. Siler pops it out to Groom. Ball toward Daly's head off the crossbar. Daly follows. Schmidt. Daly calling for it, opts to go outside instead, right to the end line, back to Daly now. Hubley, her shadow right on her back. Groom. Portland in some trouble, cannot get it out of their own end. Houston just continues to push, they get a corner. And they certainly do continue to push, and they want it more right now. Portland just reactive. Another good look at that ball in from Shea Groom. Just holds her ground, knows where the space is, allows herself to be able to set herself up. And this Rachel Daly with a strong, powerful header just ricochets that one off the crossbar. 
and right now Portland with no answers defensively chasing the ball. It's a huge loss for Rocky Rodriguez to come off the field, something that can lead them not only verbally, but also just with their experience or understanding of how to set play. Daly from the corner. Schmidt turns, not on target. A bit of a wasted opportunity there from Sophie Schmidt had time and space just to be able to bring it back down look to see if she can make a better option for herself mentioned sophie schmidt's olympic gold medal experience with canada over in japan and you may well see some more olympians take the field on saturday so be sure to come back for both of those matches turnover daily groom in the box Houston makes Portland pay. And another terrific team goal from the dash. Make it predictable defensively. Forced a ball to be turned over in the defensive half of Portland Thorns. And then they're off and running. It's a good play initially. Here's the ball from Nally, just given to Latsko, picks out Rachel Daly, who finds a third runner from Shea Groom out of the midfield. And then all she has to do is tuck it. Doesn't even make great contact with it. I think she's hoping by the end that it does get tucked in, which it does. Opens up her hips enough, though, to tuck it in that far post. Really important goal in these last five minutes of the second half. And a brace for Shea Groom. She and Daly, so much fun to watch when they get going. I mean, that is what we all saw led to that Budweiser filled Challenge Cup back in 2020 as this team proved they were a force to be reckoned with. And I think that's exactly the message they try to send here. An answer, perhaps, from Portland and Smith. Nice looking ball! Just goes wide. And that's why that second goal is so important for the dash late in this first half, because just like that, Sophia Smith continuing to find space out wide, playing those little balls back onto the top of the six yard box. This time it's Moultrie, just gets the ball caught underneath her foot, can't make good contact with it. It's always going wide. But Portland, not the most efficient half that we've seen them play in this season so far, but still finding ways to get opportunities going forward. Final minutes ticking away from our first half. The Houston Dash up two goals on the Portland Thorns. And there's no question it is a very makeshift Portland Thorns team. That is in part by design and part by the fact that they are still without so many other international players. They also have a few injured who are not available. That would make a difference. But as much tinkering as Mark Parsons had to do and his managing minutes, you know he fully expected that he would be putting a team out there that could make their way into that final on Saturday. Well, they've got some work to do now. And I fully expect him to go into the locker room and say, we just need to settle down, continuing to find that open player, understand where they can pull them apart. And that is out wide. They're doing a good job of clogging up the midfield, the Houston Dash in those two blocks of four in this 4-4-2 formation that they're sitting in. The space will be out wide once they switch the point of attack and then it'll be about serving dangerous balls in. Back to the basics of connecting their passes and just putting their foot on it when needed. And meanwhile, it does look like Houston is doing a good job of 
exactly what they needed and wanted to do in this tournament, which was to continue some momentum, to continue to grow and build until they get all their players back, until they're healthy and ready to go when they jump back into league play into an absolutely critical stretch that James Clarkson says will determine whether or not they make the playoffs or not. They're coming off a 2-2 draw against the Washington Spirit. We're hoping to get three points out of that one, but they trailed. They managed to come back and get the win late. Michaela Abam, player off the bench, first Houston native who played for the Youth Academy to come through and sign with the first team. What a debut for her in Houston. May see her off the bench tonight. See those three minutes of stoppage time added on to our first half. You knew I was going to get my Abam reference in. I mean, <laughs> oh, whether I or not we saw her or not, it's oh, one I of know. my favorites. Get ready, everyone, because she will be one of your favorites, too, as a personality to match her play. So much fun to watch. Siler, lovely touch across, but nobody home on the far post. And it's such a good idea from Latsko. Just the inside out run, and then to be able to look to see if she could play that across. Rachel Daly didn't read it. I imagine Rachel Daly thought she was going to look to see if she could go herself on frame. Smith, is there a foul? Referee's calling it outside the area and just barely. Then we'll have to take another look because from our angle, Sophia Smith did fall into the penalty spot. But was the contact made? Yes, it was. A right call to be outside, but Sophia Smith continues to be dangerous going forward, getting into that space behind Jasmine Spencer. Was a yellow card issued on the play. I think it, don't think it was intended to be on Schmidt. Well, I believe that was Oyster who came over and made the contact. And see, now the referee's correcting it. So now our referee will get it right. Oyster thought she might get away with it. Not so. <laughs> she picks up the yellow. And the dashes need to make sure they do everything they can to get this out of any sort of danger area. Smith. Not out of danger yet. Well done by Westfall, but in the end, a really easy save for Dennis. Take too long, Strom Okamoto charging down. Anticipate the whistle anytime. First half won, Lori, by Shea Groom and the Houston Dash. Yeah, really great start from the Houston Dash coming in here as if they have something to prove, needing the win, needing the momentum. And really, the Thorns, with so much roster rotation, a bit shell-shocked, still having some ability to get in behind with Sophia Smith and her pace and the timing of her runs. But outside of those opportunities from Sophia Smith, not a lot of good play or run of play that you would expect from Mark Parsons.
time. Each team is allowed 11. So we'll try to catch you up. There's one of them for Portland, Simone Charlie, who got a huge round of applause when she jogged out onto the field at halftime. You saw Hannah Bedford as well, who will be making just her second appearance, former Wake Forest Demon Deacon. Emily Mengus also onto the field, a veteran in that back line, although she replaces Hubley. So you're not going to get the typical starting two back there together. So both forwards changes now for Portland to start the second half. Sophia Smith, who was very good in the first half, a plan change. Expected to see her come out at halftime. Charlie comes in. And then Bedford joining her up top, taking the place of strong Okamoto. Houston in that signature orange. Attacking left to right now. And they were on the front foot attacking in the first half. Two goals from Shea Groom in the 17th minute and the 41st minute. Both assists coming from Rachel Daly. So two assists. I gave her one at halftime. Let's give her both and a save with her head off the line. And if you missed it earlier, this is a very different looking Portland Thorns team. There are some familiar faces, Charlie being one of them. She leads this team in scoring on the season with five goals, has scored in each of the last two games. A little oopsie there as she tried to sit up for her left foot. Pogarsh. That somehow falls to Everett. It was a gift. She couldn't put it away. And it's a promising start in the second half for the Thorns, finding Charlie early on, and then Pogarch getting a bit higher up the field than we saw throughout that first half. Dash Dashes want to make sure that they don't start dropping too deep, allowing for the Thorns to have the majority of the possession in their attacking half. Continue to stay disciplined defensively, step up, have those two blocks of four that made it so difficult for the Thorns to break down in that at first half. Moultrie had some nice moments for the Thorns in the first half for the 15-year-old. She's fouled and earns a free kick for her team. You know, I imagine Moultrie would be the one that will step over this one as well. Served a dangerous ball in that found the header of Rocky Rodriguez off that daily save. To see if she can play another dangerous ball in right in behind that back line of the Houston Dash. Moultrie, the youngest player in the National Women's Soccer League at 15. Lost the ball, it bounces, but just out of the reach of a flying Megan Nally, who's making her first start for the Thorns tonight. Nally, 23-year-old out of Herndon, Virginia, played at Georgetown, where she was a two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year, played in two college cups, won three Big East championships. Portland in first place in the NWSL standings. Houston way down in eighth, looking to make a push, get into that top six for a chance to go to the postseason. Now this match will not count toward the NWSL regular season standings. But an important tournament nonetheless for both of these clubs. A little pride on the line too, trying to represent the NWSL in the United States with Barcelona and Olympic Lyonnais the other two champions competing in this International Champions Cup. Yeah. 
Everett fouled by Schmidt. It's a little, little sloppy from both sides, a little disjointed coming out of the locker room. I think certainly that's expected for the Portland Thorns with so many changes. The last ones to arrive in Portland for this tournament, which is a bit hard to believe, but having to travel back from their game against the Orlando Pride on Saturday. Anytime you have so much changes, though, it is, takes a little bit of time for that continuity to set in, regardless of how good they have been in this season. Doing just that. Bedford got a nice little touch on the ball, just enough to force the Houston defense to play it over the line. It'll be a corner kick for Portland. Moultrie to take it again. Had two in the first half. Headed back toward the goal, and Portland has done it! They've got one on the board! I think that's quick on them celebrating inside that huddle. And that is a huge header this early on in the second half from the from the Portland Thorns off the corner. Quika, all she does is redirect it from that far out, but it tucks into that far post. Just enough power on it, bypasses. It's Olivia Moultrie with another dangerous ball in. Look how far Quika is, but it bypasses everyone. The screaming of the players for the Portland Thorns. And Dennis tries to get on it, but it's the last minute. It looks like it's Everett that's standing in her way that screens her from being able to see it until the last second. Can't make a play. And right now, Portland Thorne's right back in the game, cutting the lead in half. Quika, a Finnish international, two-time Finland player of the year, including in 2020. Started all eight of their European qualifiers. Clinched a berth with 22 Euros. Also a national champion at Florida State, two-time ACC tournament MVP and Honda Award winner. Now she's going to say, hey, maybe I belong in the midfield. Of course, even on a corner kick, a defender could get up. But anyway, new life for Portland. In the box, Moultrie! This place would have gone nuts. And this is what we didn't see in the first half from the Portland Thorns. Kristen Westfall and Pogarch on the other side, the two fullbacks for the Thorns, getting high up the field. This is where the Thorns have been the most successful throughout this season. Olivia Mulcher, wide open, has got to find the back of the net that close. Instead, just sends it over the bar, knows that needs to be the tying goal for the young 15-year-old. The journey of Olivia Moultrie, such a story. Charlie looks like she needs a moment. It's not a good sign if you're Portland. But Moultrie is homeschooled in the fifth grade so she could focus on soccer. At the age of 11, she accepted a full scholarship to North Carolina. Apparently that's not going to happen. <laughs> Decided to go pro. <laughs> and that happened February 19th. No, excuse me. Earlier this year, she signed June 30th process started a lot earlier than that and when she turned pro announced that that was happening in 2019 got an agent signed a deal with Nike a lot going on for the youngster and place gets a little quiet here now as, as Charlie gets worked on this crowd certainly realizing how important she has been especially in this last stretch of seven unbeaten for the Thorns with so many of their international players out. You never want to see a player down. Good to see Charlie back up. But a really important moment right now for the Houston Dash. Really caught flat-footed in these opening eight minutes. Somewhat shell-shocked with the Portland Thorns scoring the goal, but also a, just a near-missed opportunity from Olivia Moultrie seconds ago. Houston Dash, for a team that's willing to prove themselves, need to be putting 90-minute performances together especially a team like the Thorns that have had so much heavy rotation in this game. Daly to Groom, that's been the magical combination many times over and certainly tonight, those two connecting on both goals. Groom in the box, dribbles! 
out of bounds, but it was touched by Portland, so it'll be a corner for the dash. Charlie back on the field while you hear the applause from the crowd here at Providence Park. Former Vanderbilt, Commodore, two sports star there. Uh, Vandy, also tremendous track runner. And here comes Daly from the corner flag. Not in looking for it, got ahead to it. A lot of traffic there in front of Shelby Hogan, but she makes the grab. Hogan, a Big East goalkeeper of the year in 2019 out of Providence College. You'd be forgiven if some of these names were not familiar to you. As we've said, there are quite a few changes. Nice touch by Pogarsh. And it's due to the both the nine players that Portland has out due to injury and international duty, and also to just the load and the place that they're at in the season with two matches coming up next week. Note here, so you see Makame Gamera Stevens come in. This is a young player, 22 years old, out of Washington State. Potentially could face her former teammate Morgan Weaver. Thought we might get a chance to see Weaver tonight. She's been out the last four matches due to injury for the Thorns, but we watched her at training yesterday. Might get to see her make an appearance. Here comes Charlie. Charlie tripped. Outside the box, still charging is Portland. Bodies flying everywhere. In this time, it's Everett just doing a good job of screening. And Lasco, no need to make a foul there. Knowing how dangerous Portland has been on their set pieces and the delivery. Just get yourself in between Everett and the ball, or at least wait till you can allow for more players to step up to defend. They're giving up another dangerous free kick for Portland, who's had the momentum in the second half. Yeah, the Thorns have been knocking on the door, and Moultrie seems to be a part of all of it. Let's see if she just takes this herself. Moultrie, that's her first NWSL goal, and we are even. And this is why the Thorns have been so successful. They just will not give up. They've been relentless. Regardless of who's playing all year long, this time it's the young Moultrie that steps up. It's not even that well hit, but it does get over the, the wall. And then at the last minute, it just takes the dip underneath Dennis. And it's those little mistakes from the Houston Dash that continue to add up. And quite honestly, this game should be 3-2 to two, Portland with the way this second half has gone. Olivia Moultrie with that near miss wide open before the Charlie injury happened. You could almost just sense that outcome about to happen. And Moultrie, to the delight of the crowd, does find the back of the net for the first time wearing a Portland uniform. And right now, the Houston Dash are going to need to regroup, get back to what made them successful in the first half, being stingy defensively, but working together, not giving up silly fouls, and denying the fullbacks for Portland to get forward. Right now, just all out of sorts. 
You know James Clarkson would not be happy with this one coming in the game. He said, stop giving away soft goals early in the game. Well, that does apply to the second half as well. Both goals off of set pieces for the Thorns, a corner kick setting up Quika in the 51st, and then Moultrie directly off the free kick in the 58th. Absolutely belonged to the dash, but they, they seemed a little shaky coming out of the locker room at halftime. Let's go. Won't challenge Hogan with that ball. And it's got to be a better percentage ball going into Latsko. No players running into the box for the Houston dash. If it's not on, just put your foot on it, keep possession. Gain some confidence in this game, especially the second half, because you haven't been able to see the ball enough. It's been easy turnovers that allowed the Thorns to be able to get on the front foot. And some wasted chances. That was Schmidt that time. But last time down the field, it was Latsko putting the ball right at the keeper. Just better decision making and I think if you're Houston you got to go to your bread and butter find a way if that ball moves up the field and groom and Daly aren't touching it something's wrong right I mean the way that they were playing in the first half 100 percent a lot of that stems from the fact that this team is built on counterattacks they're best when they go quickly in transition so absorb the pressure defensively allow for the space to open up in behind the back line for the Portland Thorns and Lee Mangus Veteran defender came on at halftime for the Thorns. Westfall. Looking for an opportunity. Groom had been taken out by the force of Bailey that time, although there was a foul called against Portland. Thorns in the mix as well. And the difference in these two halves in the first half is Houston Dash being proactive, winning the first ball, winning the second ball, completely flat footed Portland. And now that has changed in the second half. It's Portland moving off the ball, finding the open player, but then when they lose the ball, right back on it, two or three players around the ball, and it's the reactionary defensive responsibilities from Houston Dash that put him under pressure. Last goal, lost, it's gotta be a card. Frustration foul to be sure, and there is the card on Latsko. Well, it's frustration, but it's also just better awareness from the Thorns. It's a great touch from Quika, the separator, forcing Latsko to pull her down because she knows she has yards of space in front of her. They don't have the cover defensively for the dash. Making a run, but she is offside. It's 
step in from Quica. Well, the Dash found some late game magic in their last match. They trailed the Washington Spirit 2 0 at home. Found a way to come back and get goals in the 61st minute from Latsko and then a bam off the bench in the 83rd minute. This time they concede the lead to Portland. The question is who will finish this one the best and earn themselves a spot in that final against Lyon on Saturday. Incredible test either way as a third place match as Barcelona reigning Champions League winners awaiting daily. Wills her way onto the ball, now holds it up. Seiler. Daly picking out her target just over the head, though. Houston Dash did a better job of stepping up their pressure, making it difficult, forcing Portland Thorns to either go around them but look to see if they can be more direct and make that game predictable. Charlie, ready to run. Gets there. Good scoop of the glove by Dennis. Right now, the issue with, with that is for the Houston Dash is that the Portland Thorns are winning the foot race. This time, it's Charlie on the left-hand side. It's just a direct ball over the top. If you're not going to get pressure on the ball, you've got to drop your back line sooner, especially with the experienced center backs of Oyster and Nutton, making sure they vocalize that quickly because that space in between Oyster and Jasmine Spencer, Portland Thorns are having a heyday with it. I mean, anytime you see Charlie start busting out those sprinter hands <laughs> that are just slicing through the air like <laughs> knives, you're, not many are going to win the foot race. Let's go chasing. It might be laboring a little bit there for Portland number 39. Seiler, deft touch to Groom. It's Taylor Porter coming in, a national team replacement player, getting some minutes for the Thorns, number 45. Spencer. Porter just making life difficult. A takedown from Daly on Moultrie. We get her points in wrestling, but foul called in soccer. And I like the calmness from Moultrie. Just putting her hands up. That is a foul on me. <laughs> oh, just a little behind. And now a whistle anyway. And a card. So as Porter committed the foul earlier, a play initially carried on due to advantage, but here's the foul that earns for the yellow. And the right call just to make sure, because this is becoming a more physical game, and just to make sure that things stay Calm, don't get out of hand. Clear foul and shake room. 
So Porter picks up the yellow, and now it will be a free kick for Houston. Got a substitute ready to check in. It is Michaela Abam, the hometown girl out of Houston, Texas. She's going to come on to replace Latsko. But we'll see if they get this kick in first. Looks like they will. Cycles. Make a late game difference once again for Houston. Lasko with a good game. I like the partnership with her and Rachel Daly. Lasko, the ability to be able to come back to the ball, help say, set play, but also just create another numbers overload in the midfield for the dash. Just a good awareness of where her teammates are. Over Abam, though, give a different look allow for Rachel Daly to be able to be the one that comes back and help set play as well. Just another threat in behind. Spencer have not seen her get into the attack as much in the second half as she did in the first. She feels both were good at getting forward, which is where they're more comfortable. Daly. Naughton. Chance in the box. Hogan read it well. And the right idea from Naughton just to thread that ball through to Gamera Stevens. Moultrie. Charlie. Goals on the season for Charlie. She scored in each of the last two. Four of her goals have come with her head, including the last two. Quika has it for Portland. Quika has been on the ball a lot more in this second half than she was in the first. Now it'll just be about cleaning up that final pass. Portland in possession. Here's Westfall taken out. Kamara Stevens, the guilty party. And Westfall doing a good job. Just going 1v1 against Kamara Stevens. See if she can draw the foul. This is where the Thorns have had the most success. These set pieces from Moultrie served in. First half, the ball cleared off the line for Daly. A free kick right on top of the box that Moultrie put away. Now it'll be about Dash making sure they have their man marks tight. Charlie may be able to get ahead to it, but wasn't able to turn on it. Was tightly marked. 
set pieces have been the undoing for the dash in this match so far. And talking to James Clarkson yesterday leading into this game, Jen, one of the things he said was just teams taking advantage of their mistakes. And he was specifically talking about those early goals and conceding and just giving the ball, the turnovers to the other team. But that also goes with these little details of not giving away fouls in da dangerous areas. Keep your feet moving, stand up the player you're playing against, force them to beat you. And instead, it just stops playing and allows them to get in behind. Thorns have done well to punish the dash on those particular mistakes this evening. Charlie not quite able to track it down. Charlie does well there to earn her team a corner. <laughs> Moultrie's ball bounces, and a bam will just. Get it out of there. Here is a bam. Finding a chance for Daly. Rachel Daly, two to beat now. Lays it off for Groom. Tyler couldn't quite control it. The crowd says, good job, defense. And Rachel Daly doing such a good job of making that ball and turning it into something that originally it wasn't. And just her ball into Shea Groom, though, just behind her, can't get underneath it. Mingez does well for Portland Thorns, though, to make sure that she stays with it, denies any opportunity. Was a foul called. And Schmidt went tumbling to the ground. And I'll give the reminder that I gave in our first match that the format of this tournament, if we are tied at the end of 90 minutes, we go directly to a penalty kick shootout. Olympic Lyon made sure we did not need that in our first semifinal. We'll see if either of these two teams can avoid deciding their fate from the spot in our final. 12 minutes and change. And to get a little bit of momentum, Rachel Daly's service has been good throughout this game on the set pieces, in particular corner kicks. Now can they find the head of Schmidt, not or even shake room. mind an experienced team for the Portland Thorns haven't really had to defend the set pieces as much. And Daly will be frustrated not to even make a chance out of it. You hate to let those chances go by the wayside. And a good look at James Clarkson's face right there, knowing what that means. Get yourself back into the game. Rachel Daly knows it wasn't good enough. But right now, Houston Dash needs somebody to get their foot on the ball, keep possession, have been put under pressure this entire second half, haven't been able to get themselves out of their defensive half much at all in these last 30 minutes. Now can they turn the tables a little bit, start to keep possession and force the defending of the Thorns? A bam! Seiler was on the turn, trying to turn things back in her team's favor.
just gets away from a band. But Siler, the one that starts that, a player that can be the one that can link, keep possession, start taking players on 1v1 if necessary. And Gabby Siler, just one of those players, it's jack of all trades. And I remember watching her in college, finished out her career at the University of Florida, and her head coach, Becky Burley, who is now the interim head coach of the Orlando Pride, saying that she clearly remembered a moment where Siler just changed the entire formation on her own and got everyone in the right spot on the field in the middle of a postseason match. I mean, that's the type of player she is. The Bam tripped up, earns her team a free kick. Michaela Abam, former West Virginia Mountaineer. A little sass, a little sizzle to help earn that free kick for her team. Eh, not quite that close, <laughs> the crowd says. So they, they let her know. <laughs> Bring it back, Sophie. No, nope, not quite. <laughs> It's ball, first one by Portland. Schmidt will try again, but nobody's going to have a chance on that one, really. some noise from the crowd it's because number 25 is stepping closer to the check-in table for Portland that is Megan Klingenberg veteran who consistently and does now lead the NWSL in chances created is there a chance to be had for Houston a bam in the outside of the area will go wide again for Gamera Stevens This crowd loves themselves some Klingenberg. <laughs> and I'm gonna let you figure out how this is gonna align, Lori, because she replaces Marissa Everett, who was really playing in the 10, the attacking midfield position. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Klingenberg is playing in that position. Earlier in this season, in particular the Challenge Cup, we did see Megan Klingenberg play in that diamond formation centrally. Needed some rotation, much like they have, or we have seen in this game tonight. Absolutely one of those teammates that will play anywhere where the team needs her. Groom. Schmidt, Daly is there, but won't get the ball. The Houston was so good in the first half when they continued to look to that open player. They didn't rush opportunities. They've gotten away from that in the second half, just looking to go more direct. The balls have to be pinpoint perfect, which we haven't seen. Yeah, there is certainly you get that feeling of being rushed once they are in possession of the ball. And of course, you go up 2 0, then the Thorns equalize early in this second half. Now you're trying to get the equalizer. You want to go quickly. This is what that team has been known for quick attacks, but if it's not on, there has to be some balance. I mean, when the player with the ball even thinks she's <laughs> out of bounds, <laughs> which is what just happened with Daly. Sorry, you were making a great point, and I was chuckling as Daly was waiting for the whistle and it didn't come. She said, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll keep playing. I'll play on, I'll keep possession. Yeah. Yeah. 
Quick has been good for Portland. And her movement off the ball in the second half is why she's been good. Quiet in the first half. Positionally, typically a right back for the Thorns, but has moved in centrally in the midfield. Couldn't just quite find the space around the dash defense, but this half it's opened up more, allowed her to get on the ball facing up. Can still execute better in the final third with her pass, but other than that, defensively has done well. Abam keeping it at her feet. She had a great move in the box in the 83rd minute against Washington in Houston's last match, last match and her dash debut really created. You can see she has that ability to cut back with the ball. She scored big goals in her collegiate career. 2016 NCAA College Cup had the goal against North Carolina in the semifinal. Of course, North Carolina powerhouse when it comes to winning NCAA championships in women's soccer. And put West Virginia in their first ever final. And the name like a bam, you just you have to be ready for the big one. Oh, right. Seriously, it she is. I love it. <laughs> An announcer stream. Called for the foul. Megan Oyster started every match for the Dash this season. Siler, perhaps Houston's best player. Well, the Olympic players have been away. Been a wonderful trade. Daly. Looking for Gomera Stevens. Fields finds a bam offside. A little bit of rust there that she's knocking off, is dealing with an injury, he's not fully game fit just yet trying to work her way back was playing in Spain but had a rough time over there and a dislocated kneecap only a couple matches played and then so excited to make the move come back to her hometown Bedford her left foot of ball finds Charlie at the penalty spot Couple players collide and the referee will say that's going to go against Portland. And right there that touch just a little heavy from Charlie and then Moultrie coming in wanting to help out and they just collide. Tough in the end because that was a good ball in that was difficult for the dash defense to deal with. Daly, a bam on the move. Siler making herself available, back to her feet. Carries it through. Daly in the box. So quick on the turn, but not on target. And Tyler just picking up some good little spaces, wiggling her way out of trouble. Just a little toe poke to find Rachel Daly. And it's that little lift of the ball from Daly to try to be able to spin her hips around. But can't get enough on it. And credit Mangus there too, right? You can tell a veteran defender there. And Emily Mangus, 29 years old, in her eighth year with Portland. In best 11 in 2016, two times named to the second 11 and was on the NWSL Team of the Month this past July. Do we have a winner in regulation? 
Or are we going to all have to prepare ourselves for the drama of the shootout? We'll see. Three minutes of stoppage time added on. Somehow Quica came away with the ball, found space for Mengus. Keep in mind, you've got two incredibly green goalkeepers for both teams. If indeed we do get to that shootout. Westfall. Ball does sneak across. A couple more subs coming for Houston. And this could indeed be thinking about planning for a shootout if they get there. Megan Rosa and Christine Nairn. How deadly she can be. Set piece situations. Siler comes off. And Spencer also comes off for Houston. Klingenberg. Charlie held off well that time by Fields. That's really good work from Fields just to make sure she denies Charlie any opportunity to get around her. Charlie's found some success with that vertical ball right down to the end line. Fields doing well just to see it out of play and earn the free kick. Perhaps the last chance coming for Houston. Daly will allow Nairn to take the throw. Nairn, a journey woman, has been around the league in the NWSL. Four teams in eight years. A bam. Tried to get Pogars to bite. Did commit the foul. Second time we've seen a BAM do that over here. And you'd think our referee will give Houston the chance to get this kick off before that final whistle is blown. And a yellow card on Pogars as well. And maybe the last opportunity and Christine there with the left foot seen her time and time again throughout her career just her ability just to weight this ball in in a dangerous area Nairn bending at the near post Houston's claiming it should be a corner kick at Raymond Roy so uh, otherwise already well over our minimum of Three minutes of allotted stoppage time. Did have some substitutions come in and eat up a few more seconds. Buckle up. Penalty kicks are coming. Shots from the mark if you prefer the technical <laughs> term. Either way, the drama is about to rise in Portland as we need a shootout to determine which of these teams is moving on to the final. And ultimately a fair result. 
in regulation for both of these teams. First half domination from the Houston Dash, and then it would be Portland to regroup during halftime, come out and really get on the front foot, get the two equalizers, and then pretty much even throughout. And this is what you expect from two teams. A lot of games in a short amount of time. We mentioned for Portland, a lot of rotation, still trying to build that continuity with some of the new faces out there. that the wild times of NWSL After Dark can continue even in an international tournament. Here we go. After regulation, we are tied between Portland and Houston 2-2. How did we get there? Well, let's look back, shall we, Laura Lindsay? Well, the Houston Dash would start off this game as if they had something to prove. And it'd be Shea Groom in the first half with the two goals. This one just beats Quico with the first touch, sets herself up and just bends that in. What a beauty of a goal to open the scoring. And then Rachel Daly on the defensive half, just keeping this one out of the back of the net, doing what she needs to do defensively, backtracking, keeping her feet moving, and just sends that one over the bar to keep it at 1-0. And then a poor giveaway out of the back to the Portland Thorns, and it would lead to Shea Groom again. Another good touch, just opens up her hips and finds the far post. Easy tap in from the midfielder. So the first half belonged to Houston. The second half, though, Lori, Portland started to come alive. Olivia Moultrie had a lot to do with it. The assist on the corner, the goal directly off the free kick. And there you go, 2-2. Two -two. Here we are, ready for a shootout. And two completely inexperienced, at least in the professional level, goalkeepers. So at least they're, they're even in that sense. Amanda Dennis in her second ever NWSL match for Houston. And first in goal will be Shelby Hogan for Portland in her NWSL debut. Why not throw a shootout in there with it as well as Christine Nairn, the Wiley veteran, comes up to the spot. Best of five.
And that goal right in front of the big wall of the Rose City Riveters. Nairn, save! Oh! Hogan, hello! And what a debut so far for Shelby Hogan. Coming in, in the ICC tournament, some big saves throughout this game. And then a really important save in the opening kick from the veteran, Christine Nairn. So now Megan Klingenberg with a chance to put Portland out in front. The crowd chanting their praise and their feelings about the dodgy keeper, as they like to put it for any opponents standing in front of them. Klingenberg taking her time. Five the corner, Portland up one. And a well taken penalty kick from Megan Klingenberg. A slow run up, wasn't sure it was going to be about the execution, but then in the end, enough pace to find it past Amanda Dennis. Sophie Schmidt now, the Olympic gold medalist with Canada. Schmidt saved again! Are you kidding me? And some people like the shootouts. Clearly, Shelby Hogan does. <laughs> not a confidence penalty kick from Sophie Schmidt. Just opens up her hips, not much of a run up. Easy red by Hogan in the end. Natalia Kuika now. Her first year in the NWSL. Had been playing in Sweden. Played in the midfield tonight for the Thorns. No, oh, that's a save too. Quika cannot convert, and Dennis has one to give a little hope for Houston. Well, the reaction from Amanda Dennis just to get off her line quickly. Big run up from Quika. And it's low, exactly where you want it, but you can see the ball bo bobbling, doesn't make good connection with it. Amanda Dennis has it read the entire way. Daly says, well done, partner. And now she steps to the spot. All-time leading scorer for the Houston Dash, captain. Dances toward the ball and hits it. Houston converts their first from the spot. And that is a fantastic penalty kick. Makes no mistake about it. Is decisive in where she wants to go. A good run up and just slots it into that near post. Closes her hips right at the right moment. You think this crowd loves this 15-year-old Olivia <laughs> Moultrie? A goal and an assist tonight for Moultrie, and now a chance in the shootout. Moultrie does it! 2-1 Portland. It's so calm and confident for such a young player, just steps up, forces Dennis to go one way, just slots it to the other side. That composure at this age is just exceptional from the young player. Let's go, she tells her team. Michaela Abam 
the Houston native, the hometown girl. And it is not enough to get it past the keeper, Dennis. Hogan, excuse me. Hogan, again, comes up big. Well, what a night to remember from Hogan. Again, not the best of penalty kicks from the Houston Dash. Bam just opens up her hips, makes it predictable. Easy save for Hogan in the end. Not enough power and exactly where you want it at the height for a goalkeeper. Simone Charlie can win it for Portland. And does! The Thorns are moving on to the final! You better give that goalkeeper a hug. And at this point in time, Jen, I'm thinking, what is Nadine Unger doing with these goalkeepers <laughs> oh, in the yes. Portland Thorns? Good call. Nadine Unger, former World Player of the Year, tremendous goalkeeper for Germany. Let's give her a little credit, right? She maybe helped some with Shelby Hogan and those three huge saves as Portland earns their spot in the final with Lyon. Houston will take on Barcelona. Come on back with us. Those should be two great matches coming your way on Saturday. What a way. Hope you stayed up late with us on the East Coast. It was worth it. From the spot. A few big saves from Hogan and then Simone Charlie gets it done. Our final 2-2 in regulation, but Portland moving on to the championship.